In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the workspace in Photoshop. Now you can start by going to the dock. If Photoshop is on your dock. Um, if not, remember you can always set that once it's open under the options, keep in dock. You can go to the spotlight and use that to, by typing in Photoshop, you can open it up that way. I already have Photoshop open, so I'm just gonna click and click on the icon here or click over here where you can see it's it's been minimized. Now here in Photoshop, I'm starting with an empty screen. Uh, there are no files open. And just as kind of a beginning point, let's talk about workspaces. So if you're not seeing this, it might be because you have a different workspace set. Workspaces can be changed here. I'm in Essentials, just Make sure you're in Essentials too, or go to scroll down to Reset Essentials to make sure you're seeing the same thing. You can also go under Window, and you can access all of the different palette options. And a workspace is merely an organization of specific palettes on the, on the screen. You can bring any of them up by going under Window. So uh, the Essentials, it has the color palette. It has the layers palette. You almost always want the layers palette open. It has the libraries palette. Not so much useful unless you you want to use content from um, Adobe uh, in terms of preset color palettes, effects, things like that. And uh, the options, application frame, which is just you know, the background and things like that, and tools. Tools you probably want open most of the time as well. So that's under Window. Any palette you need open, you can find here. I just want a basic file, so I'm going to open a file I already have by going File, Open. And uh, it's on the desktop, it's in Sample Files. Often if you're downloading files that I've given you, you might find your downloaded files in the Downloads folder. In this case, desktop, sample files, and I'm going to open cat01.jpg. So this is my image file. It's a, It was taken with a digital SLR, but it was resized to make it a little bit smaller. Uh, we'll talk about resizing images later on. Now I just want to use this as just kind of a, something to have on the screen while we're going over the workspace. So the basic palettes that you have open, uh, you have the toolbar, which is like this. Uh, you can change how it looks. If you want, this is an old school arrangement. Um, I think it dates back to Photoshop, I don't know, three, two, one, something like that. So if you really like it with the double row, you can do it that way, it doesn't really matter. But this has a lot of the basic tools you're going to use for image editing. And uh, if you go through the tools and just leave the mouse on them, don't do anything, you'll notice that it will give you the name of the tool. So this is the move tool. And it will also give you the hotkey to bring it up. So here we can see that V is the hotkey to bring up the move tool. You'll notice there's a little arrow in the corner and that means that there's more than one tool toggled here. So click and hold for a moment and let go and you'll see that the move tool is toggled together with the artboard tool. We don't have to go over the artboard tool right away, but it's important to know that the move tool is there and that is going to be one of the most useful tools you have. Next to it you can see there's what's known as a marquee tool and again you see the little arrow and here if you click on it you can see that essentially different shapes. So rectangular marquee, elliptical marquee, single row and single column. And you can see the hotkey to bring it up is M. Now, what's a marquee tool? Um, one of the most powerful ways to make changes to an image in Photoshop is by creating selections. And one of the ways to make a selection is using the marquee tool. So. If I wanted to say just cut out a circle with the cat's face, 
I could just drag here and you can see it's giving me this dotted line and it surrounds the cat's face and if I wanted to move that somewhere else go to the move tool you can see I've just created a new image by separating that area within the circle and moving it around so essentially a selection isolates an area so that that's the only area you're affecting so with moving it just it left a big hole there we'll talk about that in a moment and if I wanted to say use that selection outline and just kind of paint in that area go to the paintbrush tool you can see that what it's doing is it's only allowing me to paint within that that circle now the most important key command that you can use in Photoshop is command Z and that undoes whatever your last action was so it's not a bad idea just to mouse over the different tools and get an idea of what's in the tool palette. Lasso tool, also a selection tool. They're actually kind of grouped thematically. So marquee is a selection tool. Lasso is a selection tool. A couple of different options toggled there. We'll look at those in more detail when we go over selections. The uh, quick selection tool, again, there's a little arrow here. Uh, it's toggled with the magic wand tool, which is why W is the key command to bring that up. So W. We'll look at what that does in more detail. Crop tool. And again, a number of different options here. So crop tool and perspective crop tool. Crop tool just, you know, you would use it to just change the size of your image. So if I just wanted the cat's face, I had that selection outline. I hit return twice and it cropped it. Command Z to undo that. Uh, perspective, uh, you can also use that to kind of straighten as you crop and let's just kind of draw with that. So here I've got a, um, a rectangle that's been gridded. But what I can do now is go in and kind of have that not completely straight but I have it at an angle that matches these um, the angle of this branch here so it's actually gonna look kind of weird when I crop it I'm gonna super adjust it so that's gonna look really strange and this is what it looks like so I have put my cat into some kind of weird funhouse mirror command Z again undoes it now that might not seem super useful but it is if you have a slight distortion in your um, in your photograph maybe because you used super wide angle lens or something like that and you want to get rid of it uh, so the next tool is the eyedropper tool and uh, there are a number of other tools toggled in with that I is the key command to bring it up and again um, you would just use this to match a color for example um, if this was if I wanted to use the precise pink of the inside of cats here just click here and you'll notice it has changed the color now I'm sampling from the wood from the fur the nose each one is giving me a slightly different color and you can see it's changing over here so the ruler tool sometimes useful note tool not so much but we'll look at each one in more detail uh, the healing brush um, that for some reason has the key command J to bring it up. Uh, there are a number of different ones, the spot healing brush, healing brush patch tool, and the red eye tool. Red eye tool only does one thing, but it does it really well. well. So if you have an old image where you know you have demon eyes, you can use that to get rid of them. Uh, the paintbrush tool, and again, number of tools toggled together. The clone stamp, the uh, history brush or the um, art history brush the eraser tool E is the key command for that and again uh, there's a number of different tools toggled there uh, the gradient tool and the paint bucket tool toggled together there this is the blur sharpen and smudge tool different sections uh, in there 
the dodge and burn tool and sponge tool. We'll look at that in a moment. Uh, the pen tool, the type tool, the path adjust, adjustment tool, and the shape tool, the hand tool, and the zoom tool. Zoom tool allows you to zoom in on specific parts of an image. You can do it just by clicking and dragging, or uh, you can just kind of do individual clicks to do it one step at a time. I like the key commands, uh, command negative zooms out, command equal sign or command plus, however you want to think of it, zooms in. So here you can see if we zoom in enough on a digital image in Photoshop, what we eventually see is a series of squares. These squares are known as pixels and every digital image whether it's a video frame or uh, something you took with a DSLR or with your phone, is made up of these individual squares or pixels. Each square um, has a unique, well not unique, but it has a very specific color and tone applied to it. And you'll see each square, it only has that color and tone. So it couldn't be like half red, half white. It would either be red or white. And by placing these individual pixels together, what we get is a continuous tone image that represents what was in front of the camera when the picture was taken. So photographs, digital images are bitmap images or raster images. Pixels are also called rasters. And uh, the more pixels you have per square inch in your image, the um, more detail you're going to have and the bigger you can make it. So this isn't an overly large image. Um, and you can see that as I zoom in, we start to see those that break down into squares very quickly. Command zero is the key command to resize it to fit in the screen. And uh, you'll notice up here, you can also um, use these keys to to do it. So 100%, that's the actual size, fit screen, and fill screen. Those are all kind of options. This bar across the top is the tool options palette. Whatever tool is selected, uh, the options that show up here are, are things that you can, uh, that are tool related. So for example, if the move tool is selected, I get uh, transform op control options and I can use this to kind of arrange things. The marquee tool, um, I have, have different options that show up that are specific to that. So these are, uh, are very, this is the tool options palette and it's tool specific. Just kind of run down here a little bit more. Um, this allows you to edit the toolbar so that if you want to add or take away tools, you can, you can do that. So for example, if you didn't want to ever see the artboard tool, you can uh, get rid of it. I think for the most part, unless you're working with a really specific set of tools all the time, you can just leave them up. Uh, you'll notice here that though, what I mentioned about the toolbar being roughly grouped according to areas, you can kind of see that here too. So the different options for the type tool are all grouped here the different options for uh, the eraser tool group there, the brush tool, and then uh, the selection tools, each are kind of subgrouped there. I'm going to cancel that. Uh, the last couple of things we want to look at on the tool palette, this is the foreground and background colors. So um, by default, they're black and white, black foreground, white background. I have changed that by using the eyedropper to sample the color of the leaf. And if you want to change it back to the defaults, just click here on the little, the two overlapping smaller icons. Now it's black and white. If you want to switch them so the background color is black, just click on these arrows here or hit X on the keyboard. And that switches them around. Now, what is the significance of having uh, a background color? Well, a background color only shows up if you erase a background layer. 
JPEGs and a number of other image types will, by default, they'll come in with only one layer. We'll talk more about layers later on.